In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a website that you can host from your NAS and then have it accessible on any public domain that you want. So the first thing you need to do is log into Synology DSM which will just be the IP address of your NAS into a browser and then once you're logged in go to the main menu at the top left and then go to package center. From there go down until you find the one that says web station so this is an app by Synology so it should be relatively simple to find so it's just this one here and then download it from there and then once that's done just click on open the app will then open up and as you can see it looks like this so the next thing you need to do is open up the file station or navigate to the Synology from your local machine so as you can see on the right I've got my local Mac which has an index.html file in it and then on the left I've got my NAS which has a web folder which has been created by WebStation so you should have that as well in the top level of your NAS and then in there what I would advise doing is creating a folder for every website that you plan to have so in this example I'm going to be using a new one so I'm going to create a new folder called testwebsite.ridicraggy.com and then in that folder I'm going to drag in this index.html file so you can see that's now been moved over so if I go back to the NAS and then I go to the IP of my NAS just take off the port 5000 and then on the end just put a slash and then the folder that you created so testwebsite.ridercraigie.com and then the index.html won't be needed because it will automatically add that for you on the server so you can see there we've got the website loaded from that folder path so now what we need to do is map that to the external domain now that we've got that in there so what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to go back to the Synology NAS and then once you're back on the WebStation app you need to go into the web service section on the left and then go into the create option and then choose static website and then next and then in the name section you can call this whatever you want so I'll just call it the same as what we called the folder and you also need to make sure that you fill out the description field so I'll just put the same in there and then in the document rules section you need to choose the folder that we just created for the website where we've put the index.html file so if I click on next create OK you'll see it'll create that there and then secondly we need to go into the web portal section and then go to create and then web service portal and then under the service section we need to click on the web service that we just created and then in the host name section we need to put in the external host name that we're going to be using so in my example it's going to be testwebsite.ridercraigie.com and that's where the site will actually be viewable from by anybody and then everything else can be left as it is and then click on create and once that's done you'll see this here in this list so you can see that's been created and it's on the relevant port so now what we need to do is go ahead and open up the package center again and once you're in there you need to look for the app called container manager which is docker so once you've installed that click on the open button and then go into the registry section and then we're going to search for Cloudflare and then we're going to find the one that says Cloudflare that's just another name for the Cloudflare tunnel we're going to select it click on download and then once you click on download it'll ask you which version that you want to install so in this case we just want the latest version so click on apply and make sure the latest is selected that will then begin to download the image just there so as you can see it's been successfully downloaded so now I'm going to select the image and then click on run and then I'm going to give it a name that makes sense so I'll just call it website hosting because that's what I'm going to be using this tunnel for and then I'm also going to enable the option called auto restart so that means that if the NAS shuts down and then turns back on say after a power cut it'll automatically start up that tunnel again I would advise getting a UPS so that that doesn't happen and some backup internet and then this will take you to advanced settings so this is where we need to go over to Cloudflare so on the Cloudflare dashboard you need to click on the zero trust option on the left and then go over to the networks tab on the left and then go into tunnels and then from here we need to click on create tunnel and then leave it set to Cloudflare and then click on next and then here we'll name it website hosting so that we know what it is and then click on save tunnel that will then create your Cloudflare tunnel from there you'll get the command given to you so I'm going to select docker at the top and you'll see we've got the command here so I'm going to copy that command and as soon as we've copied this string here we're going to open up notepad or text edit depending on what machine you're using and then create a new document and then we're going to paste that string into here 
So you can see here, this is what the command looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is format this a little bit. So we need to remove everything before the word tunnel. So delete that and then also remove the no auto update section because that will be added automatically for us. So that's the new command. So copy that back to your clipboard and then go back to the NAS. And then scroll down in the advanced settings section and go down to where it says execution command. In there, paste in that command, click on next. And then after that, just click on done. And then if we go back to the container section, you can see here that it's green and it is running. You can then click on it and see all the details about it and the CPU usage that it's using, the RAM, the network, and you go into the logs and see what it's saying in there. Of course, you can change the settings if you stop the container by clicking stop in the corner. So that's as far as it goes with Container Manager. If we now go back to Cloudflare, you'll see here it says connector ID is connected. So that's saying that we've got a secure connection between the NAS and Cloudflare. So if I click on next and in here, I'm going to type the subdomain which we've created, which is test website. And then the domain will be ridercreaky.com. And then we need to go to the HTTPS section and then type in the IP address of our NAS. You can actually use HTTP or HTTPS here, but if you do choose HTTPS, you need to go into additional application settings and then TLS and enable no TLS verify. And then click on save hostname. So you can see here at the bottom, we have the domain added there and it's pointing to this IP address. So now when I type into my web browser in testwebsite.ridercreaky.com, it should map straight to that website and there we go that's that website on there now so you can add any of the files to there that you want so say if i were to just create a brand new file so if i just go into text edit and then create a new file so let's just say new document and let's just put it works and then save that so you can see there i've just kind of put that file on the nas in that folder so now if i go back to the website and put on the end test.txt it should fetch back that file Another thing to note is that the 404 pages will look like this by default. However, if you go into the WebStation app again on your NAS, you will be able to go into the error page settings and go into default error page profile and modify the settings for this here. So you can see there it's pulling this file, 404.html. You can actually upload your own file and use that as the error page. You can have a redirect or whatever you wanted there. You can see you've got some more options up at the top as well. And then some of the things that you can play around with is in the Cloudflare dashboard. You can actually go into your Cloudflare settings and change them as you normally would because this is proxied by Cloudflare. So if I go into my DNS, you'll see that if I type in test, you'll see the DNS record which we've created, which is proxied by Cloudflare. So I can enable different features, like I could go into speed and then optimization and enable all these features here. So say if I wanted to add a compression, you can do that. Cloudflare fonts, and this will all speed up your website, rocket loader, auto minify, all things that I recommend enabling if you know that it's not going to break your website. You can also go into the security section and then go to bots and enable bot fight mode to stop bots coming through. You can then go into the security section again and then settings and set the security to high or just make a configuration rule to make that apply only to that specific subdomain just for extra protection, although Cloudflare do offer DDoS protection for free. Um, I also advise enabling the option in the control panel on the NAS and then going under the security section and the protection, DDoS protection and enable that. And that will help a little bit as well. So there's much more things you can do, but that's something you can go ahead and look at if you want to do that. So if this video helped you, please subscribe and thanks for watching.